Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Bible study. Others are on their way, but it's time to get started. And and it's a real blessing. Um, Getting a bunch done at the home today. Got to upgrade the lighting. And and, uh, Reverend Chatter's working along on the bathroom. And so, got some improvements. Amen? Amen. And that's all possible because people give. And so, so I want to thank you for your giving. And we also need your giving. And, you know, it's a blessing to be able to say that when we're not taking taking up an offering. All right. So, I just want to say we appreciate your faithful giving because that's how that's possible. So thank you for that, and uh, it's really, really good. So we need to get started, get in our Bible study tonight. We're in Colossians chapter 2. We should finish up this second chapter tonight, and um, we're going to be picking up on our third section of it. So before we get started, we need to pray. So I'd like to ask Reverend Walker, sir, if you please pray for the Bible study and for the minister. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God, tonight for the Bible study. I ask that you would uh, help the man of God to bring forth the bread of life, that you would make teaching easy that you would give us all receptive hearts to hear the word of God, to be not only hearers of your word, but doers also. We thank you, for it's in the name of Jesus Christ, our greatest thing. Amen. 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 How many know God's good? Amen. Amen. How many God loves you? Amen. 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 So let's go ahead and get right into this, right around chapter 2 of, uh, of Colossians, and reading in verse 16. In verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of new moons or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. And so we see here this portion of Scripture that, well, let's continue to read verse 18. Let no, no man beguile you of your reward in voluntarily humility, worshiping of angels, intruding into those uh, things which they which they which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. No doubt, the apostles writing this because this is what was going on at the church of Colossae. They were being tempted to do this, and so what's he what's he dealing with here? He's talking about really the idea that our righteousness is in Christ. Amen. Our righteousness is not in uh, attending church on a regular basis, but we should do that. Amen. Amen. Our church is not in paying our, our righteousness is not in our tithe paying, but we should do that. Amen. Amen. Our righteousness is not in our our apparel or any other thing that we might do or whatever customs we may follow. Our righteousness is in Christ. Yes. Jesus is our righteousness, and then these other things follow as an evidence of the fact that God has that the, uh, that grace has had in our hearts. And so we'll dig into this a little bit. Our righteousness is not found in ritual. It's not found in custom. It's not found in religious exercises or in traditions, although I will admit I really enjoyed the traditional German cookies we had the other day. It was a blessing. Amen. I have a couple more of those later on. God's good, amen? amen. I like tradition, but, but that's not where our righteousness is found. It's found in Christ. Let's look at Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. God is good, amen? amen. So let's just, we'll dig into this just a little bit. Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. See, it's very important that we bring this out because some people, because of godly living, might begin to think of themselves as being more better than other people. But we're not. Without the grace of God, we would be hopelessly lost. The Bible says if the righteous scarcely be saved. Is he saying that, you know, because we're hanging on by a thread? He's saying, no, saying that if it wasn't for Jesus, none of us would have had a shot, right? We're saved because of what Christ did, amen? And we can have confidence and boldness that we're going to heaven. We don't have to have this fear that we're going to miss and walk around in fear. God doesn't want that either. We just kind of dealt with that um, just recently about that he that's fear, he, he who fears is not made perfect in love, and we can be being perfect in love and not have to walk in fear. But the reality is that if it was, if Jesus didn't die on the cross, none of us would make, could make it in. Christ is our righteousness. Follow me, if you will, Romans. Excuse me, I just told you Romans, chapter fourteen. Look at verse six of the same of the same chapter. Look at verse six of the same chapter. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. He that regardeth not the day, he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. He that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and he giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. And so, 
Once again, what's the effort? He's not telling us that we ought not to you know, make go to church on Sunday and make the midweek service, but we don't do that to be righteous. We do that to keep our mind in the right place. Amen? Amen. To stay focused. I a little illustration I might share with you here. Uh, I got out of the military back in 2000, before some of y'all were born, back in the day. I went 20 years without, hitting the without going to the dentist. 20 years. Now, this is true confessions by Pastor Rossi, all right? But I don't like dentists, so therefore I didn't go to the dentist. And then one day I was doing working doing some electrical work at a dentist's office, and while I was doing some electrical work, all of a sudden I uh, felt the Spirit of God direct me and say, you should come here. I was, there was a bunch of people in there. Most of them were over 40, and they were just laughing while they were getting worked at. Who laughs at a dentist's office? It was just it was like it was like a bunch of friends just getting together that had known each other for years and they were enjoying themselves and I was there changing out light bulbs or fixing some fixtures and I felt the Lord kind of deal with my heart that this would be the place you should find a dentist because I knew I should go to the dentist and get my teeth checked out and anyway so I didn't and and some years went by and in year 20 right about the time I was going to come here I was eating a piece of pizza and a big old chunk of my tooth broke off on the back in the back side of my teeth. And I'll immediately, I'm like, God, forgive me. I should have went to that dentist. I should have went to that dentist. And then I was like, just, you know, ever anybody here ever not listen to the Lord? Okay, well, I didn't listen to God. God told me to go to the dentist, and I didn't go to the dentist. So now I'm in, I'm in repent mode, which is a good thing to do, by the way. We should repent when we do wrong, not just sit there and make excuses for it. And so I began to repent. I knew in the morning I was going to call in to the work and say, hey, I've got to go see the dentist right away. And uh, so I did. I showed up and I profusely repented to the lady at the front desk. I need to get seen right away. A chunk of my tooth came off on the back side of my teeth. And I was going on and asking her and just asking her, hey, uh, I just I really feel terrible. I, I shouldn't be. Or I'm just I mean, I'm having true confessions, right? Having an altar call there, right there at the, at, at the, at the desk at the receptionist. And, and she's like, it's all right, sir. We'll take care of you. We, we can squeeze you in today. And, and so we'll just try to make it make a way to get you in. We realize that you're really worried because I was getting ready to come down here. My wife and I were getting ready to move in just like a month. And so I'm just like, great. Now's the time to have teeth problems, right? And so I went and I saw this first. I don't know what her title is, but maybe a nurse. She began to check work on me once again. I'm sitting there telling her, I'm sorry. I, I should have been here. I'm telling her my story. I'm spilling my guts. And she's like, it's okay. It's okay. And then finally, after that takes place, the dentist shows up. He starts digging through my teeth. He goes, you know what, Mr. Rossi? You have some amazingly good teeth for someone who hasn't been to the dentist in 20 years. And I said, well, I don't fall asleep with sugar in my mouth much. I drink a lot of black coffee and, and uh, black tea, no sugar, and water. I said, but really, I do attribute to Jesus helping me all these years because I don't like going to the dentist office. And he said, you got some really good teeth. He said, you didn't, your tooth didn't break. He said, what broke was you had a bunch of, uh, a bunch of plaque and tartar built up on the backside of your teeth, and that just broke off. Your teeth are fine. But it felt like a chunk of my teeth. I said, I said, is there anything I could have done, doctor? He said, well, I could tell you don't floss much. I could tell you brush a lot. So yes, sir. He said, you can need to floss a little bit more. And I'm not trying to give you a dental lesson today. I'm trying to share something about our righteousness is not in our attendance to church and all these things. Amen? Uh, but he said, but I said, is there anything I could have done? He said, no, sir. He said, plaque buildup is a natural effect of the body. It just does it naturally. And you got to come to the dentist on a regular basis to get it cleaned off. And right then I begin to think, in, in my body dwells no good thing. You know? <laughs> no, matter, no matter how hard I try to keep, you know, uh, on my own, this flesh is, is, is flawed, and we need the grace of God to subdue it and keep it in place. Amen? Amen. But then I also, I got a message right there. What was the message? If I would have made regular dental checkups, there would have been a bunch of buildup. And when we make regular spiritual dental checkups to the house of God... The sin and, and wickedness and the nonsense in our life doesn't build up. Right. Amen? We may come, Pastor might get fired up and say something that rubs us wrong, but it's a minor checkup and correction rather than a major overhaul. Amen? And so as we attend church and make our place the way to the house of God and find time to read our Bibles and pray and do right and do all these things, we find ourselves becoming more solid, more consistent, more, uh, more solid in our faith, and we reflect Jesus Christ. And so we don't go to church to be, right, to, to, to be righteous. We go to church because we are righteous and we want to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. And that needs to be the right way to look at it. I don't know about you, but I know I need God. Amen? Amen. And every time I go to a church conference, it costs a bunch of money, 
We travel to our church conferences many, many miles away, and sometimes it's up, up to upwards of two grand just to go for plane tickets and whatnot. But there's never been one I've gone to where I said, right. no, I, I wish I didn't go. Right. I've always said the money was not the money. You could have had the money. It was well worth every dime. Amen? Amen? And so it is. That's why we invite you. That's why we encourage you to come to the house of God so you can get a blessing. So make, regu- make, make your regular visits, and hopefully coming to church isn't like going to a dental office. We don't want to give you a root canal, all right? But make regular checkups of the house of God, make it part of your daily life, and you'll find yourself growing. Amen? Amen. All right, so Amen. our righteousness is not in keeping all these traditions, but it's in Jesus Christ. So now that I took that time to share that, let's move on. All right, so Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, be not carried about with, this is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 through 9, I'm reading to you. He says, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats. And so, if you have a special diet, diet you're following, good for you. But whether you eat quinoa or you eat steak doesn't make you better than somebody else. Amen? This isn't the, the kale club, okay? Or something like that. God's good, all right? But if, God, if you want to do that for your health, go ahead. But that doesn't make you, I'm more healthy than you are. Oh, sorry, Mr. Health Purity Person. You know, it's a fine fault. The church, they think they're holier than everybody else. Now you got all these people that don't go to church that think they're more pure than everybody because they, I only drink organic and I only eat organic coffee and I only eat, bot, drink special pH 9 bottled water. Oh, you little <laughs> feeble people out there. And they have to talk about us like it's a church that's always being so hyper, so critical. Nowadays, it's the people outside of the church that are fine and fall. Well, you used the wrong words, and you said this speech, and you should have said that. Now, Christians ought not to curse, amen? amen. But we're not telling you you got to be politically correct. Amen? Amen. There's freedom in Christ. Amen. All right, God's good. And we self-govern ourselves. And so anyway, God's good. All right, so we don't have to fall into this trap of thinking that our obedience to ritual customs and rites is what makes us righteous. We're righteous because of Jesus. Amen. The Word of God says, says this concerning grace. You've heard me say this all, a lot. You'll continue to hear me say it as long as, you're, uh, as, long as I'm your pastor. That the def- definition of grace is simply this. It, is, it says, the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. When somebody's been divinely influenced by grace, it reflects in their life. Yes, that's, right. that's it. Real simple. Yes. Amen. If grace has impacted your heart, it'll affect your life. If grace has impacted your heart, it'll affect your church attendance. If grace has impacted your heart, it'll affect your giving. If grace has impacted your heart, it'll affect what you read, what you listen to, what you yes. do. Amen. Because great, you've been divinely impacted. Amen? Amen? As we've said before, you were uh, impacted, not divinely, by your drill instructor, and it affected the way you live. Amen? Is that right? Amen. Is that a fair? Okay. Well, let's be divinely impacted by God and let God affect how we live. But God's good. Amen. All right. So follow after the divine, the holy influence upon your heart, and be like Jesus. Let God direct your steps. Let God deal with your heart. Let's move down into verse 19 of this same chapter. Get myself back to Colossians chapter 2. Good to see Henry. God bless you, brother. Good to see see Benson. God's good. Amen. Amen. All right. Appreciate the Lord. It's great to have Jeremy back with us from Japan. And so it's good. God's good. And so uh, appreciate the Lord. All right. Verse 19 of Colossians chapter 2. He said in this, he's speaking here, in not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands have nourishment and knit together increaseth with increase of God. And then verse 20, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. So you notice again, he's He's dealing with this idea that they were performing all these strict religious exercises thinking that's what was making them righteous. Mm -hmm. But it isn't. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when we're righteous, we willingly, lovingly bring ourselves into subjection to God's love and God's grace and do those things that are consistent. As I said before, if if it's not good, if it's not something that should be in a perfect heaven, it's not something that should be in our lives. Amen? Amen. So if there's speech, if there's patterns or behaviors or attitudes or dress or apparel or something, that's not godly. If if, if it's not appropriate for heaven, then it's not appropriate down here because Jesus told us to pray that the kingdom would come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Amen? We want heaven right now. 
And then we want the, the fulfillment of it later. What I'm saying is you can begin to experience the goodness of God in your life right now. You don't have to wait till you die. You can experience grace right now. All right, moving on. So we desire the, the, we desire the righteousness of Christ to be seen in us. Follow me to Psalms chapter 71. Psalms chapter 71. You have, you have to have the right attitude, the right perspective, the right approach towards things. Because we're all growing. Hopefully we should all be better today than we were yesterday. That's your biggest comp competition is yourself. Now, so we like to blame the devil for everything. And yes, you could probably say most of it lays at his feet. Because if he wouldn't tempt tempted Adam and Eve, we wouldn't be in this position. But the fact of it remains that if you want to be a better you every day. Amen? Amen. We want to try to advance every day. And if you're a better version to today than you were yesterday... That's good. Amen. You're making progress. Let's move forward. Let's be more like Jesus. Psalm 71. He says in verse 1, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never let me never be put to confusion. So he's trusting in God. And that's what we need to do today. Now jump in this same chapter, Psalm 71 to verse 15 and 16, where he says this, My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness. So whose righteousness is he talking about? My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness. He's praising God here. And thy salvation all the day. For I know not the number, numbers thereof. He said, I don't know how long I'm going to live. He said, I will go in the strength of the Lord. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. And that's it right there. He's not talking about his own self-righteousness. He's talking about the righteousness of Christ. If we're going to boast, let's boast in God. Amen. I am what I am by the grace of God, I've grown because of God. God's been so good to me. Uh, I hopefully you can say that you're not the same man you were even a few years ago, maybe even a few days ago. We are we are by the grace of God. Amen. Yes, Moving forward, getting better each and every day. That should be our desire to grow and be like Christ, to see Christ formed in us. We want to see Jesus in us. We want to see Jesus in our brothers. We want to see Christ around us. And so let the Lord be formed in your heart. We need to, we need to look to his righteousness and not to our own. Okay, moving on. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15. God is good. When is he good? All the time. All right, all the time. If I can get myself there. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15. This is a Bible study where we flip pages. Look at a lot. You'll learn the word of God. Get a Bible, bring it to the church, and, and you'll learn the word of God in Bible study. All right. Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Notice in Colossians, he was saying they weren't keeping the head. What does he mean by that? Jesus is our head. Amen? He's the one that has the preeminence. He's the one that is the leader of the church. And so he's the one that we need to look to. I'll read it again. Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Growing up in the Christ, growing up into Jesus. One man put it this way. He said, and when God gives us the armor in Ephesians, in Ephesians, he says, put on the whole armor of God. It's like you're a kid with a bunch of armor. You have to learn, you have to fill it out. You have to grow up and learn how to use it. You have to grow into your armor. And so God wants us to grow up spiritually, be men, and fill out the armor and take the fight to the devil. Amen? I was talking to Henry the other day about wrestling. And so he used to wrestle, I did too. And I was talking about how that... When I got saved, I read that little scripture there. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, principalities. It talks about wrestling spiritual wickedness in high places. I told him, I said, I didn't stop wrestling. I just stepped up to a higher competition. Amen? And so God's kids are weak. God's kids are strong. We have, we, we have the right perspective. We stepped up to a higher plane, a higher level. And so this is the attitude here that we need to grow up into God. We need to grow up, quit being little kids. Let God be God in our lives, being sp spiritual adults. And be do it. And what what do, what do adults do? They take care of their responsibilities. Amen. 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 Adults pay their bills, Amen. right? Adults make it to work on time. That's what adults do. Adults take care of the kids if they're good. If they're if they're not acting like adolescents, right? That's what adults do. And we're spiritual adults. We go to church. We don't need to be told to go to church. We do. It's part of what we do. We find it. We find a place to pray because we value. Uh, uh, we we take responsibility for our walk with the Lord. Amen. Get a, get alone. Read the Word of God. Spend time in the Word of God. Find a place to pray. Be an adult. Grow up. Be what God wants you to be. Amen. 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 My wife doesn't ask me if I if I have offering for church. Right, babe. 
I make sure I have offering because I was giving an offering before I knew her. But my dad taught me when I was a little kid, he would give me a buck. I'm giving more than a buck now. Amen? Inflation's hit a long time. I'm not that young anymore. But uh, we'll, we'll be thankful, thankful for whatever you can give unto the Lord, really. And once you pay your tithe and do what's right. But becoming an adult. I remember the first time you came to church on your own without parental influence. It did, did something, didn't it? You just come on your own. It's like, I'm doing this because I want to do this. I'm growing up. I'm being an adult. I'm not, mom and dad aren't making me do this. It's something I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because I value my relationship with God. And when, and when we have that attitude, God blesses that attitude. And I don't know why Amen. I'm sharing this, but our, our righteousness is, is hidden in Him. Okay, moving along um, for the sake of time. Follow me to Romans chapter 5. Let's go back to Romans. Romans is a blessing here. Talking about God's righteousness. Talking about we desire to see Christ formed in us. Getting ahead of myself. Romans chapter 5. That's Acts. All right. Romans chapter 5, verse 21. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you see what, you follow what I just shared there? He just talked about us reigning by grace. See, God doesn't want us to be weak. God doesn't want us to be defeated. He wants us to reign in this life. Like a king, because that's what we are. He's made us king's kids. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, kings and priests unto God. It's his desire that we reign in this life. And so I'm going to read it again. That as sin hath reigned unto death, we used to be under that. But now that we've come to Christ and God's washed us, God's cleansed us, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. By the grace of God, we can reign. By the grace of God, we can live victorious. By the grace of God, we can be what God wants us to be. Amen? Amen. We don't have to let the world get the best of us. You can, by the grace of God, control your tongue. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you guys believe that? Amen. You, by the grace of God, can control the things that you, uh, part, the things that you eat and drink. You, by the grace of God, can uh, control your mind and the way you think. You can focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on God. How do you do that? Get some gospel music. Get, get some gospel music. Get the word of God. Begin to direct, put things in front of you that are going to get your mind in the right place. It's not, it's not, it's not really rocket scientists. science. You can do it. Amen? Amen. Make conscious decisions. Get rid of junk. Get your mind in the wrong place. Remember years ago, a brother got saved. He's in my church in Bakersfield. Paying attention to this, and he said, Pastor, I'm having a hard time. I'm always thinking about girls. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm like, well, what do you what do you do? He's like, I cleaned up my music. I got rid of all my my heavy metal and all that crazy stuff that was talking about killing cops and being stupid. I'm like, okay, so what do you so what are you listening to? He's like, I just listen to the easy easy the easy listening channel. I'm like, well, no wonder you're in a battle about girls. All easy listens like when a man loves a woman. <laughs> Like, man, get some gospel music. Get your mind on Jesus. Amen? Amen? And he was trying to do the right thing. He was making changes. I wasn't trying to be hard on him. I was trying. I, he was trying to make, move in the right direction. But we want to get our mind on Jesus. And when our mind's on God, Amen. then what? It's not on our problems. It's not on the difficulties of life. It's not on our failures. It's on him. And when our mind's on Christ, we get up out of the doldrums. We get up out of the pit of despair. And we walk straight. And we begin to enjoy life again. Amen? Amen. And so get the gospel music out. Get the word of God out. Call up Reverend Torres. Call up Brother Clayton. Talk, call up Brother Aaron. Hang out with the brothers. Do, some, do something positive. Keep your mind on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. It'll be a blessing. Amen. God's good. All right, moving along. Where was I? Paying attention to the time. So I'm not good at that sometimes. All right. Romans chapter 10. We're in Romans. Let's go to chapter 10, verse 4. I'm kind of privileged to be in Bible study. Thank you for the opportunity to teach tonight. God is so good to us. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. He finished it. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad God finished the law? Amen. I'm so thankful we don't have to sacrifice pigs. Not pigs. That was dirty. We don't have to sacrifice lambs and calves and goats and all this other stuff. We can eat pigs, though, now. Thank God their law is over. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Amen. Have some pulled pork. 
Be good. There's some some tacos at the home. It's pretty good tacos. It's good, good stuff. Clayton made some tacos. Street tacos is good stuff. Sister Ross made some killer corn the other day. I don't usually like to eat, eat that because I make a mess of myself in front of her, but it was good. I was like, whatever. Let's just do this. So God's good. All right. Let's move on. Let's wrap it up if we can. Back to Colossians chapter 2. Back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 23. Let me read one verse of scripture to you out of Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, before we move any further. And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And so what are we ultimately trying to say here? What's the, how can we sum, summarize what we're trying to get at here? We're not righteous by the things that we do. We're righteous by our faith in Jesus Christ. And because we've been made righteous, now we walk differently. I've used the illustration, and I'm going to use it again. When I first made the varsity wrestling team, I didn't feel like I should be on it, even though I was on it, because there was a bunch of guys on that team that were really, really good. But I had the jacket, I had the letter, and I had to learn how to act like I belong there. For the next four years, I'd make that team all four years. We'd make state all four years. And I have a letter that's one of the few things I've kept from my childhood. But why, why do you keep it? Well, because I was already on the team, but I had to start acting like I was varsity, mentally. And what I'm trying to say is if you've accepted Christ in your heart, you're already on the team. Just live like it now. Are you, are you listening to me? Yeah. Maybe the first time you got corporal or you get to a certain promotion, first time you get sergeant, you're like, I don't really feel like an, a sergeant. Be a sergeant. You are one. And everybody else around you is expecting you to be one. Amen? And as one man said, you're an eagle and you've been hanging around with chickens. But the chickens are trying to figure out what you're doing in the chicken coop because you can fly. Amen? And so what I'm saying is, spiritually speaking, you're, you're, you're a Christian. Go ahead and be one now. Amen? Quit trying to be accepted. Quit trying to say, God, I just hope you'll accept me. Christ already accepted you when you gave your life to him. So now just step up, put the letter jacket on, and walk right. Be what God wants you to be. All right. There's no honor, Bible. There's no honor in giving into the flesh. But there's no righteousness gained in restraining it. Uh, we, we, there's no honor in giving into it, right? Well, it's good to do whatever. There's well, no one's going to respect you then. People respect disciplined people. But there's no righteousness gained in restraining it either. Our righteousness is of Christ. And one last scripture reference, and then I'm going to close. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. In verse 27. It's so essential that we understand that our righteousness is not something that we earn. Because if you feel that way, you're never going to feel righteous. Because you're always never going to feel good enough. Because without Christ, none of us is. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27. But I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection, least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. See, we need to discipline ourselves so we don't find ourselves falling off the path. If we get our eyes off Jesus, we're going to find ourselves in the wrong place. And sin blocks our vision. We can't see Jesus when there's sin in our lives. It, it taints everything. It spoils everything. And so we need to keep that nonsense out of our life. And you can by the grace of God. Amen. I'm going to wrap up on this. A painter of a landscape scene, a painter of landscape scenes, always kept in front of him on his easel a number of precious stones. Emerald, sapphire, and ruby. Asked why, he replied, to help me keep my colors true. In the course of time, without some constant reference, my eye might lose its perception of color tones. And the colors I choose might not be right, may not be what they once were. So it is with us, in the requirements of our ongoing life, lest we wander astray, we need occasionally, we need occasionally, excuse me, exposure to some unchanging and unfading standard. Unless, unless we are in touch with some constant reference, we can deviate and scarcely know it. That's a fact. We need some touchstone to test ourselves by, one that's worthy of our life of what our life is, one by which our life tones can be safely set, the only perfect and unchanging Lord. Our goal, church, our target, our pattern, our prize must be Jesus. Amen. He's our example. Amen. Amen. And I'll also like the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But I really want to put the heavy on as I follow Christ. 
Jesus is the standard. Amen? Amen. We need to be like him. We're not comparing ourselves to our brothers. We're comparing ourselves to the Lord. We want to be an example of him to you, but he is the target. And so Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything be, be uh, if anything, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Notice he said, I press. I press toward the mark. I press in. And we have to have that mindset. I want to be like Jesus. I've got to make decisions that are going to keep my mind on God. Our righteousness is of Christ. It's not our own. It's not something that we gain on our own. But we have to have a made up mind. We're going to go to heaven. And if we're going to get there, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. And as we keep our eyes on Jesus, we become more and more like Christ. And the world see Christ in us. And when they see Christ in us, that's the effect of grace on the heart. Amen. God bless you our prayer. I know God loves you today. Amen. Amen. Church tomorrow night, Reverend Walker is going to be preaching, looking forward to what God has in store. Bring somebody with you. Come back yourself. Keep your eyes on the Lord. God's got great plans for you. Amen? Amen. 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 I'd like to ask Reverend Walker to share the close service of prayer. Thank you, Reverend Paul, tonight for the Bible study, for the Word of God, for the people of God. Just help us to take heed to your teachings, to the doctrines, to be hearers and doers of your Word. And I just want to thank you for going with each and every one of your children as you depart from your house. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ, our greatest things. Amen. Amen. Amen.